Okay. Um, so this is just a tutorial in the work that we've done today, so that if you missed it, you can kind of catch up and get some of the theory mainly. Um, so two main things that the theory helped with when we were shooting, um, uh, to talk about them and to show you some examples around the room with the stuff that we've still got set up. Um, but we, we may need to talk about tracking markers and the kind of tech and the ingredients that you need to shoot to make camera tracking possible in computer software afterwards. So that'll be the first part. And then the second part is to talk about lighting and colour. Um, the way that we've got the lights set up on me at the minute is rubbish. It's not at all ideal. If anything, it shows you how bad it, 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 you know, it is when you get it wrong. Um, so the fact that on the green screen here you've got a very hot spot and it's not flat at all is kind of bad practice. And just to say that, uh, we have had to take the lights back to the store, so I'm going to have to do some kind of uh, drawing perhaps on here and, and explain about the light inside. So, so if you're wondering, and if if you're wondering whether this setup is to show, you know, the brilliant way to do it, it actually isn't. This is kind of not not right. Um, so I'll get I'll get into that in a minute. So, so I guess the first thing is just uh, kind of how to set the camera up. Um, this tutorial that you're looking at is photographed with a 5D, a Canon 5D, and that's the camera that we've been using all day. Um, that's a good camera to do this kind of work. Um, maybe not so much for keying, um, but certainly for camera tracking because it has a full-size chip. So um, we get more into this in the lab, but it's basically the same size of a chip or sensor um, as a 35mm uh, piece of film. Uh, and, that, and that's no accident because the, these cameras all came from, uh, you know, old school photography. So, uh, so using film some some years back. Um, that is only the case though. You get kind of quite a square picture if you're shooting stills on on these cameras. If, as we've been doing, you're shooting HD, it does crop into that square in order to give you the aspect ratio that is HD, which is nineteen twenty by. 1080 or um, expressed as an aspect ratio that's 1778 to 1. Um, most people round that up actually so it ends up being 178 to 1. So that expresses that in pixels. So it's that shape of image. So what that means is that the top and the bottom of the chip in the Canon 5D isn't used. Um, we need to look more at the theory and I'm not going to do it on this tutorial just lost the line. Why is that going to Keep rolling, keep rolling. <laughs> Carl will uh, fix the... Uh, fix the line. Maybe it's just switched off. No idea. I have no idea. So, um... So, so, you know, this, this business, when you look at physics and the way that people kind of describe optics through a, um, you know, like a camera, uh, a camera lens, you, you have the, the, the image kind of opposing, you know, like it, it ends up being upside down. So right way around there, and then get it sort of upside down there. Um, without this being sort of technically correct and getting into detail over it, basically that business and that diagram where you compress this kind of relationship depending on the focal length is really important for camera tracking. So this, that like the size of image that's being, you know, actually kind of um, actually recorded on the chip, um, as well as knowing the what I know is the focal length. Um, and on these cameras, it's uh, it's the zoom setting at the back. So whenever you're framing, whatever that's set to, you need to make a note of it. Um, we've been using um, either 40 millimeters, or that was this afternoon, or this morning it was set to 24 millimeters. So whatever is the best to frame the picture, like 40 is a bit tighter, so you'll get a bigger person, and 24 is a bit wider, so you'll get a, a smaller person and you'll see more. You just need to make a note and remember um, that that focal length. Um, and then when we come to do the software stuff uh, with Nuke here, we're doing uh, camera tracking, Nuke X, we need to enter um, uh, actually this value in 
And you need to account for this value when you do a piece of maths that's kind of, um, that's you, that bit of maths where you have the two factors and you find the third, which I'll cover in the lab. Basically, it's this that you're accounting for. And you're finding out the, the, the actual camera back, which is what, uh, is, is another word for the sensor size again. So the sensor size in the uh, in these cameras of 5D I've forgotten um, the exact millimetre size, so we need to look that up. But it's xx millimetres times, or you know, across by um, by xx millimetres deep. So we'll find that out, and then that and that gets entered into software, and that gets entered into software, and then it should camera track properly. Um, so we talk a bit about markers. I'll just whiz you over to the other side of the room where. Um, the, the other important thing that we've recorded after shooting the, the scenes that we've set up today is this camera grid. Um, and, and now there used to be grids, that's why I called it a grid, but, but now the checkerboard has become the new kind of camera grid. So um, you need to record one of these for each lens setting. So this has got a note on it, which is good to have a note in the middle so that when you record you see what it is. Um, uh, that's the Canon 5D, so we can look on the internet to find the camera back. And then 40mm is the, the, um, the, the focal length. So um, what we do is we record this so that it fills the frame. And we have to record video on the 5D, not take still. So it has to be a video thing so that you get the right aspect ratio. Um, it needs to make sure that this is going over the edge of the viewfinder and make sure that the camera is level uh, and rock solid. So put it on a tripod, have this on the wall. Ideally, this should be taped, really. And then you've got a red dot on, on this one that tells you where the center is. So you would record that, and then that clip gets taken in with all the footage, and Nuke uses this to de what we call de-lens the plates. De-lens is just another word for undistorting uh, the plates. So anything you have to you have to camera track, as well as having to know these bits, these numbers, focal length and sensor size or camera back, you also have to do this using this recorded checkerboard. Um, you'll fire that into the software, and it will flatten um, the the plates, which can then be better camera tracked. Um, also for CG to have this data, you can use it the other way around to redistort the CG parts of a comp so that they look like they've been shot through a camera because obviously everything that's CG isn't gone anywhere near a camera because it's been created in a computer. So you will relens and this data gives you the ability to relens. So you'll need one of these for anything really that you shoot for, um, for visual effects uh, that needs to be camera tracked. Uh, you need to shoot each zoom setting or each prime lens that's been put on the camera you right on there and you shoot with that exact setting on the lens, this thing, and then we'll use it in the software. So, so that's that. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the, um, this is like in my television, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the, the markers, uh, just, just quickly. So um, on a green screen, you want obviously want uh, about that amount, you know, like quite a lot of them, to, to, to be honest, and, and that distance between them is pretty good. And we measured it, we, we have a ruler, so we just, you know, sort of did it properly, spent a bit of time just ensuring that they were pretty much a ruler's length apart. Um, and like a kind of a brick wall, we, we kind of offset the rows of them so that they're, you know, and then that's offset, and then that's offset. So there's a kind of a, a, a track, the idea is that wherever you, you, you know, you shoot with a camera, wherever you move it, there's a tracking marker, or there's about four or five tracking markers in the back of the shot. There's a lot of kind of, and, and a, lot, a lot of variation. These are the classic, you know, um, uh, shapes. So L's, upside down T's, pluses, crosses, and variations of, of, of those shapes are, are good to do with tape because then the tracking software, you'll find that if you're doing particularly user tracks or manual tracks, it doesn't jump from what it thinks is the same because there's enough difference, it usually doesn't do so much jumpy stuff. I mean, Nuke's a bit more automated than something like 3D Equalizer, but the practice, or the kind of good practice really, uh, I would say is to do this. 
Um, a lot of filmmakers, a lot of sort of VFX uh, productions you'll see do the complementary opposite of the green, which is red. So you'll see a lot of little lights on, on big productions or, or red markers. Um, I mean, that's completely fine, but it has the, the drawback of being more difficult to remove because, because red is so kind of uh, pronounced uh, on the screen, when it passes under actors, the poor old compositor has a lot of trouble to remove them because they're so pronounced. Whereas this is a kind of a bit of a good compromise because they're easier to remove the less, you know, less kind of colour. It's closer to the green, so you find that they they're in hair and in uh, going behind actors. They're much more forgiving in terms of uh, painting them out afterwards. And because you've got the channels, which is a little, I suppose, some people kind of forget this. Um, you can render the plate in a single channel. Um, it will be the, the, the green channel that will give you the most difference. And render that whole kind of clip in, in, in Nuke. Just switch the green, use shuffle or um, yeah, shuffle to, um, to shuffle out just green channel. Render that and then you can camera track and there will be contrast difference which is a big thing that tracking needs between this tape and this green screen so you'll be okay anyway and then once you've got that camera track when you come to work on the real plate that's full colour you'll be able to remove these more easily that's the thing um, it, it would be great to have lighter green but I can't get hold of any this is just electrical tape from the electrical store so it's pretty easy to come by this stuff so I always use this myself um, if you're doing smaller project or smaller kind of shots on particularly TV screens or uh, now it's all iPad screens that people want a new uh, picture put in there, then these things you get just from the stationery shop, either these kind of squares or the little circle dots are pretty good to have in each corner of the screen and just shoot that and then you can do screen replacement. So anything that's tighter, have a collection of these kind of stickers, coloured stickers from the stationery store. Pretty good. Um, the the other thing to say is that when you're shooting uh, green 